can't stop, won't stop, get guap. Ten white toes and them toy flip flops. Manicures and pedicures, I'm always tip top. When they say I'm not hot, all these lies need to stop. Cause I'm icy, wifey, haters wanna fight me. So guys, I'm starting off using my canvas wig head. I purchased this off Amazon. So I've already put on my black cap and I'm just taking some wig pins. And as you can see, I'm pulling the bottom tart. That way there isn't any slack in the cap. And as you can see, it's making a straight line at the bottom and it's going to be easier to put a track on right there. As you can see in the title, I purchased this hair from I Am Erica J. And you'll be able to see a lot of little tips and tricks that she shows on her YouTube page throughout this video. So, I'm going to begin by pinning my frontal onto this mannequin just so I can see where it's going to fall when I sew it on my wig cap. Now you want the lace to make an M, meaning that I'm going to pin it in the middle and the two sides, I guess where you could say like the cowlicks would be, they're going to kind of make an M. Go ahead and play around with your frontal and make sure it's falling where you want it to. And also make sure to place your frontal a half inch to an inch above your actual wig cap that you're using and not directly on it. So now as you see I'm going to go ahead and pin the sides and you don't want to pull the frontal back but rather let it fall down how it's naturally falling. Don't try to pull it back and this will help make the M in the front. Don't try to pull the frontal back to make the front smooth. Once again, make sure your lace makes an M. If it doesn't make an M, then you're doing it wrong. And ladies, when I say M, I mean the little pucker in the lace. Like, the, the lace on the two parts where your temple would be is just gonna kinda pucker up and not lace smooth. So now I'm going to begin sewing the frontal onto the cap. It doesn't matter that I'm sewing through the band of the cap. I know in all these videos these girls say, don't sew through the band of the cap, it won't be able to stretch, this and that. But because we're cutting like the front of the cap off, that part won't really matter. So it's okay if you sew through the cap. Um, I'm making sure to pin the hair back, try not to sew any hair under your thread of course it'll make for the application to be way neater and also you don't want to pop off any of this good hair that you didn't pay for now every knot that first knot that I made I made sure to knot it three times I knot all my knots two to three times just to make sure that they don't come loose and also as you can see I'm sewing really close together on this frontal because I want it to be sturdy, I don't want it to pucker, and I just want to make sure everything is really seamless. So now that we're at the end on the other side, you're going to see me knot this two to three times and just make sure it's secure. I purchased a 20 inch frontal, a 20, 22, and 24 inch bundles and I'll show them to you here. 
and each bundle came two inches longer than what I ordered y'all that's amazing so not only was this raw hair and it's really expensive but you you get a little back because you get two inches longer than what you're actually purchasing which leaves room for cutting split ends or layering or anything like that or if you just want to keep those extra two inches like I did you can go right ahead I like to wear my hair the length that it comes at first and then once the ends get a little shabby after a couple months then I'll go cut my ends Okay, so now we're going to begin sewing the tracks onto the cap. I started maybe an inch uh, to a half inch above the bottom of the cap. And as you can see, I'm pinning the tracks on where I want them to go before I actually sew it. And also, I'm doubling the tracks for this first bundle I'm using. When I get closer to the top, I will sew the bundles in single. But as long as I'm in the bottom, I'm going to double my tracks. And once again, uh, I did do my knot two, three times. Remember before you start sewing to make sure both of your tracks are aligned so you don't make a mistake and just sew one track to the cap. Okay, and just to be clear, I am cutting the end of every row I'm doing. Normally, I do the fold over method, but I want this wig to be really flat, really seamless. I'm taking my time on it, and I'm making sure to measure out these tracks, making sure that they're at least a finger length apart, a finger width apart. But um, to be clear, I am cutting the tracks after each row. Ladies, make sure as you're sewing 
that your tracks are going straight across. I know some people like to kind of do a U and let the middle kind of dip, but I'm sewing straight across and you'll start to see when I start to curve the tracks. But for right now, we're just going from one side to the other. So as you can see, I ran out of thread, but it's totally okay if this happens to you. Just get another needle and make sure to start a half inch to an inch in front of your last knot. This will ensure the security of the track in case anything happens. And I just like to do it just to make sure that all of my tracks are safe and sturdy and I don't have to worry about anything lifting. Okay, so normally I wouldn't do this, but this is the end of the bundle of bundle number one. And it just so happens that I have these two pieces that perfectly fit this section. So I'm just going to tightly sew them to my last track. So now that the tracks are getting closer to the frontal, please, please, please do not sew your tracks onto your frontal. Don't do it. I mean, you can if you want to, but you'll never be able to take that frontal off without taking the entire wig apart. So as you can see, I'm stopping my tracks 
right before the frontal. And what this is going to do for me is that once my frontal starts to bald or look old or if I just want a new one, I'll be able to completely cut the front of the wig off, pop on a new frontal and have a brand new wig. Okay guys, if your string ever gets too short and you can't tie a knot in it, just separate the two pieces of string and tie it like a shoestring a couple of times and you should be just fine. Okay, remember early in the video when I told you to go from one side to the other and you start to see when my tracks curve? Well, now it's that time. So as we get closer to the top of the unit, the tracks are going to have to start to curve. Make sure to keep the same width between tracks because the more the hair curves, the harder it is to keep a consistent width between the tracks. So try to keep an eye on that. I try to just pin parts of the track, sew it, and then pin another part because I've noticed that if you try to pin it from one side to the other, things move around and you'll end up sewing the track in a place that you didn't need to.
Okay, now some people like to start putting their tracks straight across from this point. I personally like to go just a little bit uh, smaller, go in with my circle, I guess half circle, just a little bit more. So I'm going to put maybe like one or two more tracks in this circle and then I'm going to start going straight across. So now we're going to begin sewing the track straight across just to fill this little hole. Um, I'm just going to go end to end for this little semicircle that you see here and sew a little piece just to cover and finish the wig. Now later I do go in and I put one more tiny little track underneath here but I don't show that on camera but that's only if you want to do that. I had some extra hair left over so I thought why not. Once again, make sure to sew in front of the frontal and not on the frontal. We want to be able to separate this in case we ever want to replace it. Okay guys, so I'm just showing you here that um, the elastic band that I connected from ear to ear on the frontal i'm now taking the band and i'm sewing it to the bottom of the wig i'm stretching this out so that it could lay flush on this and um this will just help the wig to fit more snug instead of having this gap right here and so um yeah so the wig will basically slide on like a hat <laughs> but um yeah so you can leave this free this doesn't really matter as long as this right here has no buckles you should be fine and if you can see on the tabs i sew it in an l shape don't just sew the top of it because if you leave this loose one you'll put too much tension on these knots and you can rip the lace so this l this L sewing pattern helps to not put too much tension on any one spot. And also, it'll help the tension of this bottom line right here to keep pulling it down instead of this pulling in. Um, I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have any questions, just make sure to message me or leave a comment. Okay guys, so here's some footage of how it turned out. Now remember this is a glueless frontal wig so I can slide this on and off as I please. I will be uploading a, I guess, part two to this video showing how I inserted some combs in the wig so that it can be secured and also how I made these baby hairs and plucked the frontal. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and see you next time. Bye guys!